Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to uh, Mining Your Moz episode six. This one's gonna be about extending lithium ion battery life, any types of lithium ion batteries, whether the round ones we use, the uh, pouch lipo cells, any of the lithium ion chemistry. Any questions you ask in the comments, I'm gonna consider as requests for future videos for topics. Uh, gather those up, that's uh, really how tonight's came about. This was further down my list, but brought it back up based on some of your feedback. So let me know in the comments what kind of videos you do want to see. More or less technical, shorter, longer, something. Let me know how I can make you a subscriber. And onward. Um, extending lithium ion battery life, it's really basically pretty simple. Just let's not abuse them. And, and what that abuse means and things we can do, we'll go into a little more detail, but most of it, it is they don't like hot or cold. They don't like being run hard, um, charged hard, anything like that. And through that, you maybe double your life, but a lot of times we use them really, really hard and these will have less of an effect. But if you're not, if you're getting you know a few months to a year out of it, there are ways we can extend that life a lot. First thing is temperature. <laughs> temperature is absolutely the number one enemy of any battery, any battery chemistry. They're rated to maximum about 75, 80 degrees Celsius, which is pretty freaking hot, but they start aging at about 45 Celsius. And with the plastic wrap on a cylindrical batteries, or even more so with the lipos, it barely feels warm. A lipo might barely feel room temperature unless you've got the pack wrapped in a closed fist where you can feel it's warm. So don't think, hey, my batteries aren't hot, they're perfectly fine, or, oh, it's barely warm. No, it's already starting to age a little faster. So if you can use a two battery mod instead of a one battery mod, sometimes it's just the choice we make. But if you have an option, don't let them get warm. Letting them get cold or using when they're cold is gonna give you lousy performance. The resistance of the battery itself, its ability to, the chemical reactions, the ability to get those electrons out and do its job are reduced significantly when they're cold. You can use them down to, well, what, minus 20 degrees uh, Celsius, you know, about four below zero Fahrenheit, but never ever charge them when they're below 32 Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. The batteries get damaged. This reduces their life. If it's done enough, it becomes a danger because you start taking lithium ions and they plate themselves onto different parts of the battery as metallic lithium. And that's the stuff that can be dangerous because it can cause those little dendrite crystal growths that short circuit the battery internally, or if there's enough of it, I don't know if it's possible, this is the stuff that can react badly with water if the cell does rapture, uh, rupture. But if the cell ruptures, you probably have a lot of much bigger issues to deal with, like what made it rupture, than a tiny bit of metallic lithium inside the battery might have formed. So don't let them get hot, don't let them get cold. Now lipos, pouch lipos, um, even cylindrical ones from internal battery mods, those are lipos inside there. They're the same pouch, but they just wound, wind them up spirally. Think of a, you know, a rectangular lipo battery, roll it up. It's the same thing. It, it's a lithium ion chemistry called LCO, lithium cobalt oxide. And the problem is though, they start degrading at around 60 degrees Celsius. So your pack is going to feel, you know, just moderately warm and you're doing damage to that pack, a lipo, if, uh, using it and you're using it really, really hard. So again, for any chemistry, keep them at a moderate temperature. Room temperature is great. Let them warm up to that. If you're coming in out of the cold, you want to use it. Let them cool down before charging. Let them cool down after charging. Whatever you can do, it helps each little bit you do helps extend the life of the battery. Staying above 3.0 volts helps. Now they're rated down to two and a half volts, uh, non lipos. Lipos, I'd stop at three are the ones 3.0 volts. Most regulated mods cut off, stop, or throttle back the power at 3.1, 3.2 volts, a couple with 2.8, that's not a big disaster, but staying above three helps. Extend the life just a little bit. Stay above three, minimum for lipos, 3.2, 3.4, even better. They are more sensitive, more temperature sensitive, more voltage sensitive, more handling sensitive, everything more sensitive. What you get back from a LiPo is tremendous performance versus 18650s or 26650s round cells. There's no need to fully discharge or recharge any lithium ion battery. All that does is waste the limited number of cycles, charge discharge cycles you can get from a battery. So don't do it. You only have to do that maybe 
with NICADs, nickel metal hydride, these older battery packs and older batteries. So don't do it for us. Partial discharging is better. If you, have the, if you want to say, hey, I'm going to bring it all the way down to 3.2, or is it better if I just go to 3.8, 3.6 and recharge? Let's say recharge twice a day versus once a day. It's a little better, assuming a decent charger, to recharge twice a day, namely do a shallow discharge, recharge, shallow discharge, recharge, rather than bring it all the way down and back up. Again, it's, it's about keeping that battery's operation in a limited range, voltage range, temperature range, the everything range. If you can, and you have a charger that lets you do it, setting it to 4.1 volts or even 4.0 volts will significantly extend the life of the battery. I'm talking double, triple the cycle life of that battery. It's just abusive for a battery to be charged to 4.2 volts. Why is that the standard? Because we want maximum run time at the expense of everything else. It, it's just become the expectation. You can get, excuse me, a lot more life, overall life for the battery by going to lower voltage. 4.1 is often a deep, decent compromise because we're abusing them otherwise. Uh, you are going to lose maybe 10 to 15% of your capacity by going down to 4.1 volts because you're not charging them all the way. The return on that inconvenience is much longer life. If it lasted nine months, well, hey, maybe it'll last 24 months or uh, you know, 18 months, something like that. Also important with the charger is the charger needs to turn off when it's done. So really, the place not to save money or try to save money, because in the end it doesn't save you anything, is with the charger. Get a good one. I don't have any to recommend now, but no name. China charges for very low dollars. It gets you nothing. It saves you no money. Make sure it turns off. If you're not sure, contact the manufacturer. Because if it doesn't, it's just abusing the battery, sitting there, float charging it or trickle charging it. Now, these two terms are abused or misused badly by a lot of the China charger companies. Kind of, they don't really know what it means or the translation gets muddied. But trickle charging, it's a term for lead acid batteries. We charge it up a particular voltage and then you hold it at a slightly lower voltage 24 hours a day, essentially keeping that battery on standby because they self-discharge so quickly. We don't need to do that. Our batteries hate that. Make sure the charger turns off. All those chargers will turn back on if the battery drops too low in voltage and it tops it off again. But it's always better to just remove the battery once it's done charging anyway, put it in an insulated box Insulated, you know, silicone sleeve or something for storage. Don't don't store them in the charger. Never charge over 4.20 volts. They're rated to 4.25, but I was just mentioning just before that, the higher the voltage you charge them at, the faster they're aging. The longer you keep them at that voltage, the faster they age. All these things, each one is just a little something you can do to help extend the life. Some of them are really convenient and easy. Some of them are not convenient at all. It's up to each of us just to figure out what we want to do or not do, what's worth it, what's not worth it, where our priorities are. Cost versus convenience versus uh, cycle life in the batteries. Uh, occasionally I see a charger going up to like 4.26, 4.27 volts. That doesn't turn your battery into a grenade, but it's really crappy for the battery and just don't use it. If you see it going over 4.25 ever, don't use that charger, get another one. There's ones out there that you know, top off at 4.6, 4. Excuse me, huh, 4.16, 4.15. That's fantastic. Little loss of capacity, treats the battery uh, more gently in case anything drifts with temperature or something like that. You have a little extra safety margin. If you can, and this one's really inconvenient, it's best to keep your batteries at around half charge. This is how they're shipped. This is how they're stored by the manufacturer anywhere from like 40 to 70%, somewhere around 3.6, 3.7 volts, 3.5, 3.8, just not fully charged and not discharged. If you can, if you run your battery down to 50, 40, 60%, and you're not gonna use it for another day until the next day, it's better not to charge it up right away, but to wait until tomorrow just before you use it, charge it. Now that's not at all, uh, not at all convenient. It's in fact really, really inconvenient, but this is a way you can add cycle life to the battery to extend the overall life of the battery. And if that's your priority, this is one way to do it. Slow charging. Fast charging heats up the battery, ages the battery, shorten battery life. So slow charging is good to a point. You know, you can't say, oh, 
you know, one amp charging is better than two amp, so 0.1 amp charging must be incredible. Not really. You're not seeing much of a difference below half an amp to one amp or so for what we do. For any, for over, let's say 15 amp and higher rated cells, one amp is a good compromise between charging speed and uh, overall battery life. Now, some of them are rated to four to six amps. Uh, I have a charging rates table. Check in the description below. For my blog at ECF, you can get my charging rates table and you can get the rates as set by the manufacturer for a bunch of Samsung, Sony, LG uh, batteries. You can look up the standard rate, the uh, rapid or fast rate, which ages the battery. But if you're in a rush occasionally, it's okay to do. And then what I recommend for very long-term use, so, uh, long overall life. <sighs> Something we are often not willing to do is reduce how much current you're pulling from the battery. Reduce the power setting that you have on your mod. Switch to more batteries so there's less current per battery being pulled out or less power per battery being pulled from it. That reduces temperature, that reduces the damage. Now some people will say, hey, you know, my 30 amp pulses on this 30 amp battery, my battery barely gets warm. It doesn't get any warmer than a battery being run at eight amps continuously. Yes, but the problem is that heating internally happens in little spots more than some other places. So hot spotting, it's called. That can cause localized damage, localized breakdown of some of the materials in there, oxidation, aging of the battery. By the time it spreads and gets to the outside, it doesn't feel very warm, but you're doing damage internally. So high power pulsing damages the battery more than you think just based on the temperature outside. But again, it can be very inconvenient. We may not want to add more batteries to the mod we use. So this isn't always an option. If you're storing your battery more than ah, a couple weeks or so, bring it down to 50%, 3.7 volts. Again, that's not critical. There's no correct number. Something that just gets around halfway charged. And then put it in a, an insulated container of some type, a, a box, a sleeve or something, and store it at room temperature. Your refrigerator is just not going to help much. Um, they're still going to age in storage. Batteries are crappy being stored. Don't buy 50 batteries and store a ton of them away thinking you can pull them out in a couple of years and they're as good as new. They're still aging. Not drastically, not rapidly, but it's just better to buy new batteries in a couple of years. Better to rotate through them. If you buy 20 batteries, rotate through the 20 batteries. That way you never have to check every couple of months to make sure they're still around 3.7 volts, pulling your batteries out of storage, measuring the voltages, topping or bringing some back up to 3.7 volts. That's a pain in the butt. Just rotate through them. Now they're all being maintained. You're checking their condition as you use them. It becomes a lot easier to track the condition. And since you're spreading out the use on the batteries, but also not storing them, you're going to get the best overall life out of them. Back to basics on just not blowing up your batteries, which certainly helps extend their life. Keep that wrap, the plastic wrap around the battery and the top insulating ring just underneath the wrap up on top around the positive contact in perfect condition. No dents, no scrapes, no peeling back. Replace the wrap, bring it to a shop, buy new batteries. Don't, this is one of the most important things you can do safety wise and to help extend the life of your batteries. Keep them in great condition. Don't drop them or dent them. No damage is acceptable to the manufacturers. They're made to be taken out of the box, spot welded together into a pack, add protection electronics, and put them in a hard battery pack. There, there is no side denting, but nothing is acceptable in terms of damage on these. I can't say, oh, that 16th of an inch dent is okay, but oh, eighth of an inch isn't. It depends on where, it depends on the battery, it depends on the condition of the battery, how it's used subsequently, how much dropping it's taken, etc. So, so just don't do it. If you're not sure if it's safe or it's too deep, just go, ah, recycle the batteries, tape the ends, bring them to a recycling place, a home improvement center, something with a battery recycling bin and get new batteries. We just, to make them last a long time, don't just throw them all over the place. Treat them a little more gently and they're gonna last longer also. When to replace batteries? That's gonna be another video. There's actually a, a bunch of things to look for and we'll go into it uh, on, on a separate video for that. But for extending life, that's everything. Thank you for watching.